Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course, and we are pleased to be joined by someone I've known for a long time. Uh, of course, Eric Backich, the uh, the head baseball coach at Clemson. Uh, how's it going? Case, great to see you, my man. We go back, geez, almost 10 years and yeah. uh, just glad oh, to wow. see you're doing, doing well. And <laughs> almost. Almost, yeah. I mean, you started... Uh, 17? 17? Yeah, yeah, I guess 10 years might be a stretch, but you know, it's been a few, it's been over five. Yeah, so. it has been. So uh, good to yeah. see you again. And uh, of course, uh, we'll just talk about what it's been like um, since, uh, since you, since you took the Clemson job, just kind of talk about, um, you know, what it's been like down there. I know the season's kind of getting started and just what's it like to get going again? Oh, it's great. It's a, uh new challenge, new opportunity, all that stuff, you know, drinking from the fire hose, just, uh, you know, getting settled in, hiring a staff, get, getting connected with alums, meeting the players, putting the fall curriculum together for training and for classroom segments. And, um, you know, it's just been, it's been a, a whirlwind, but super fun at the same time. And, uh, you know, just just really excited to, to be back, you know, Case, I was here um, 21 years ago. Um, 2002 was the first opportunity to be a baseball coach, and it was at Clemson. And uh, so just I've always felt like this was, you know, kind of a gold standard, high bar kind of a place just with the circumstances of being here the first time in 2002 with three hall of fame coaches with Jack Leggett and Tim Corbin and Kevin O'Sullivan were the, was the coaching staff. So to come in as the 24 year old rookie and, you know, just get to be a sponge and learn as much as I could from those guys was truly a blessing. And then our team that year was amazing. We were number one in the country for most of the year and finished you know, tied for third in the World Series. And it was just an incredible experience. It just ingrained a, a love for Clemson and just a, a, a deep gratitude and appreciation to to just get to be there um, to start a coaching career. And then reflecting back, you know, went with Coach Corbin to Vanderbilt, as you know, and, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't have my wife and kids and, you know, just the opportunities along the way, the chance to go to Michigan, and do what we did there. If it, if it didn't all tie back to, you know, kind of changing lanes, going from strength coach and, and personal trainer and fitness world to baseball coaching. And it all happened at Clemson. So it's, it's full circle and, um, you know, thrilled to be back. And, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of, you know, it's like lunchtime right now. There's still a lot to do tonight. You know, most people, you know, winding down, but we, we just, we're just, it's a good, it's a good busy, you know what I mean? It's a really good busy. It's a, it's a nonstop all the time, full tilt, all go, uh, full throttle type action. And we're loving it. Yeah. Uh, before we get into this year's team, let me, I, I mean, I mean, I have to ask you this, uh, was it tough leaving Michigan? Oh, it was, yeah, it's very tough. Um, very tough because of the players. You know, I mean, just the, just all those relationships, the guys that are still there, um, every single one of them that was uh, on team 156, it's back for team 157. Uh, but it's, it's all the guys from team 147 to team 156. And, you know, just the, you know, when you, when you're at a place that long and you put a decade of your life into it, it's, it's hard just to up and go you know, and, and our children loved it. They were at, you know, St. Francis, um, Catholic school there in Ann Arbor. We had great friends, family friends, and, um, we ended up, you know, getting a place in Northern Michigan as well, uh, which we're going to keep. So we still feel like we are still Michiganders, uh, yeah. even though, you know, we, you know, we're not there's, you know, maybe that much, uh, but, I love the state. I love the people, love the school, love the university of Michigan, you know, all, all always, I, ho I hope my kids go to Michigan. You know, I just, I, I love it there. And I, I think it's an incredibly wonderful place. And, you know, anyone who's looking for a school in the Midwest should go to Michigan. All right. Well, let's talk about um, your team this year, kind of talk about some of the returners that are coming back and uh, just kind of take me around. Uh, to, I, I get to ask uh, 
college baseball coaches this again. Kind of take me around the diamond um, uh, and tell me who's where. Um, uh, starting, you know, let's uh, starting with catcher and then going all the way around. The Ooh, okay. So those are tough questions. We got the thing we've got. We got a lot of competition, and the, that competition hasn't been sorted out. And we're actually really glad that we still have five weeks of of training um, to figure out some spots. Now I can you know, kind of give you who's might be in the mix, but yeah, for sure. I don't, I don't know if I could tell you if we've, lo- you know, identified any lockdown roles just okay. as of yet. And yeah, just tell me who's in the mix and all that. Sure. Yeah, no, we, um, we have a catcher who uh, got a couple catchers, but one of them was named a preseason third team, all American Cooper Ingle. Yep. And we've got a kid that is a freshman, true freshman, um, his mom was actually a softball coach named Jacob Gerald. And, uh, you know, those two guys have kind of looked like they've put themselves ahead a little bit for the catching duties. Got some other guys that uh, will provide good depth in that position. But Cooper was a, you know, big statistical performer last year, uh, you know, as a middle order hitter. Um, so, you know, excited about his bat and, He's been fighting some arm issues since last year, so hopefully we can keep him healthy this year. Uh, the infield is actually a, a very old infield. We got a lot of old guys in the infield, which is a good thing. And you know one of them, Riley Bertram. Yep. Uh, Riley can, you know, he can play second, short, or third. He's uh, he's a true, versatile type of guy. Um, and so excited about his leadership, his just his his know-how is just this savvy that he brings to a game, having been there on the biggest stage, just kind of games moving a little bit slower for a guy like that, just especially it being his fifth year and all the experience he he brings. Uh, had the, the returning starting shortstop from last year is a guy named Ben Blackwell, who's a transfer from Dayton, played for Coach Jason King, who I think you, you know as well. Yep. Uh, Kinger runs a great program, so you could see why Ben is such an awesome kid and um, steady Eddie type of a shortstop. He did really well last year. Also, uh, you know, kind of thrust himself into the middle of that lineup. Actually, hit hit in the leadoff spot if I rem- if I remember right. But really good player. Um, another really good player named Blake Wright, who played mostly second base for them last year for Clemson last year. Has also played third in his career. Florida kid that just had big numbers last year offensively. Um, you know, it's just kind of one of those, one of those standouts. So I'd say those three guys are going to be, you know, uh, in there a lot, um, assuming that they can stay healthy. Um, and then you know we had a a, a player named Caden Grice that was a freshman All American a couple of years ago. He moved to the outfield last year, struggled a little bit, and we're moving him back to first base. Um, he's a two-way player, left-handed pitcher, first baseman, big power, left-handed power, um, just a phenomenal specimen of an athlete and a player. And, you know, he's just, you know, light tower power kind of guy. Um, huge prospect, huge high ceiling potential. Um, so, you know, moving him back to first base, you know, uh, keep, keeping him in the action, having him pitch, all those things I think will really, you know, help him get into a good groove offensively. Uh, and then we have some other guys in the infield, some younger kids that, you know, had a nice fall, Cam Canarella, true freshman, South Carolina in-state kid, good player, left-handed hitter. Um, you know, we've got some couple of kids we brought with us from Michigan, uh, Nolan Naraki and Jack Crichton. Yep. Um, you know, they, they both have the ability to play um, in the infield as well. And then the outfield, the outfield is super crowded. We got, you know, we got nine or 10 guys out there. And I would say at any given point, we could probably start seven, eight, seven or eight of them and feel really good about it. Um, so you got a, you got a fifth year player uh in in chad ferry um you got a fifth year player in tyler corbett those guys tyler was a everyday starter last year ferry started plenty of games in his career you have another fifth year player in the infield i forgot about max starbuck um, who's just a, a savvy veteran that brings a lot of experience uh but back to the outfield 
Um, so you got you got some older guys out there, but then you got a ton of young talent as well uh, in in the freshman and sophomore class. Yeah, Tristan Bissett is a left-handed hitter with big power. Gavin Abrams is a, a scrappy left-handed hitter with line drive st- stroke and a good player. You got Will Taylor, who is a football, who is a football player. He's a two-way, two-sport athlete at Clemson. Uh, and then you have a bunch of freshmen that you know have just done a really good job um, and inserted themselves very nicely. Nathan Hall, Jack Crichton, Leighton Lackey. You know, those guys have just done a phenomenal job of uh, just inserting themselves uh, into the lineup. And I'm forgetting somebody and I can't remember who it is right now, Case. I think there's one more out there, uh, but the outfield's, outfield's loaded. And I mean loaded uh, with, I don't know how we're going to keep all these guys happy. You know, it's a it's a good problem to have, I guess. But that's probably our biggest threat is, um, you know, how do you keep, how do you keep, how, how's enough playing time go around? Yeah, for sure. Um, but let's, but that's uh, the position player side of things. Let's go. Um, let's go to pitching. What's uh, what's that looking like? Again, very deep. Um, we may not have that that first round pick on the mound this year, uh, but we've got a bunch of really good pitchers. We have a bunch of guys that you know have the ability to run their fastball up there into the mid nineties and uh, some really good breaking stuff. And I like the, I like the, you know, just the variety, the mix, the variance. We have guys with high slots with, with lower slots. We have guys with induced vertical break on the fastball. We have guys with run and sink. Uh, We have just enough lefties. We have more righties than lefties, but just enough of a mix to use different looks, you know? Um, But we, you know, we have a, a closer last year that's converted into a starter named Ryan Ammons. Um, so we're going to give him a shot to start this year. Uh, but he was uh, he was kind of that high leverage go to guy last season and and did a really good job in the closer role. Uh, but he's a left hander that's got a big arm and, um, you know, really, really like what he brings to the table as a, as a starter. And then we probably have four or five guys after that, maybe even six that all could fit somewhere in that Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday type of a role. Uh, and then we have some really good guys uh, on the back end, you know, that could, could be in the mix for long relief, short relief, high leverage close. You know, you know, one of them as well as Willie Weiss and he's yeah. been in those moments. He's, he's done a good job and he's, he's really, um, you know, he's really shown some big time improvements, even as a fifth year guy, he's made some big strides, especially with his fastball command. You know, he's always had the slider. That's his bread and butter pitch. Everybody knows it's coming, but nobody knows what direction it's going. That's the beauty of his pitch. Sometimes it slides and sometimes it drops and sometimes it doesn't do anything. It just stays straight. So it's yeah. tough to hit. Uh, but when he can actually use another pitch besides the slider, he's dangerous. And so uh, our pitching coach is elite. His name's Jimmy Bellinger. He's um, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal pitching coach, and he's really helped Willie unlock some command that he hasn't had for a while. Yeah. So you know the pitching staff. It's a it's a deep. You know that's probably the strength of the team is the physical talent and the depth of the roster from a physical talent standpoint. So. You know, good problems to have. We'll try to keep these guys happy and, uh, you know, just kind of create that training environment where we just challenge them uh, from a from a mental standpoint all the time and uh, just get them to callous their mind, callous their brain uh, for any situation that arises, any uncontrollable, and just know that, you know, there's no finish line when we're on this journey to – keep improving and keep getting better. But I like our team, Casey. I really do. I, we're not missing anything. There's nothing we're lacking in terms of the ability to, you know, get hot and play for a long time in the postseason. But it's definitely one of those types of teams where if we do reach our potential as a team, we could, you know, we could be a team that's competing for it all. Yeah. And of course, of course you know how to, you know how to get to there. Of course you have done it before, but this is going to be a lot new. Well, you're back in the ACC, so 
what's it going to be like to get used to a new conference to to a new conference again after spending so many years uh in the big 10 um you know we we've I, I don't i haven't really thought of it like that i guess because it's all relative you know it is a it is a better conference top to bottom um the big 10 got really good there for a while you know we were sending five teams to regionals there a couple of times um so i think that the you know the top teams in the big 10 can compete in any conference um but this one is going to be probably you know teams teams one through 14 or one through 13 however many teams there are um they're all going to be good you know in any given year any team in the acc could be a a, a regional host or a super regional team in any given year depending on the year so that's that's probably the biggest difference is there's absolutely no let up. There's six more conference games in the ACC than the big 10. Uh, so it's 30 conference games of just, you better bring your, you know, you better be prepared and ready to, ready to compete. Uh, Cause if you don't, you know, then you, then you're going to be in for, a tough day and that's that's probably the biggest difference is uh you got to play well you got to play well to win in this conference that's for sure you got to earn it yeah. and uh, you can't beat yourself uh, but you know probably the biggest difference is the first four weeks we're at home you know that'll be yeah. a that'll be a new thing you know <laughs> so yeah. we'll have to get on uh get on four four air air flights uh every thursday yeah. so Looking forward to that. You know, that'll be a nice change up. Um, you see a packed house, you know, it's a good crowds here. Uh, you see a lot of that in the ACC as well. You see some really good crowds, uh, some places that, you know, have some, have some good environments and in some hostile environments and some, some fun places to play. So, yeah, I mean, I, I was, I was here a long time ago, uh, not a long time ago, but I was here at when Maryland was in the ACC. Yeah. Um, you know, it didn't didn't go so well uh, in those uh, three years of conference play. We were still climbing that that mountain, so to speak, in a lot of different areas, <clears throat> not just recruiting and player development, but you know, facilities and budgets and everything. And um, so it's great to see that you know Maryland's in the Big Ten now and has really really found their stride with what coach chef did and then what coach Vaughn is doing now hosting a regional last year. Pretty cool. But uh, I remember that the experience being at Maryland when we were in the ACC and just having a, a, a good barometer of, you know, what this conference is like and how, how much it, it is uh, unforgiving and how you got to really be uh, on top of your game and play well in order to have a chance to win this conference. I mean, what, Going into the season, you know, of course, you're with a new team. Are, and you, But you've been here before. What's it going to be like walking out there for your first game, knowing that this is, this is, this is, I'm back? I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, it already feel, it feels like that, you know, the, just uh, being here June 16th, the press conference every, every day since then, it's like this, I'll have a different nostalgic moment uh at some point like i remember that or i remember that and wow that's totally different um because the the campus has exploded you know the town has exploded the facilities of, i mean everything that that coach sweeney and the football program have brought to clemson over the last decade have just completely transformed um the just the growth and this the 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 infrastructure the brick and mortar buildings the facility everything I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome to see, but at the, the foundation of it, it's, it's still Clemson and it's still a unbelievable, awesome, small college town that has huge college spirit. Uh, and, uh, you know, the whole town revolves around the university, obviously. And so I think I'm probably going to be, you know, first game, I'll probably half of me will be a fan, you know, just like, wow, this is Clemson. This is cool. Like I am at the football and basketball games. Yeah. And the other half is going to be just, you know, super appreciative uh, at the opportunity to, to get to coach here and just want to do everything in our power to make sure Clemson baseball 
restores its place, its rightful place at the top of college baseball. And it, you know, that's uh that's a big driver in this as well. Um, because there's huge opportunity there and it's a chance to do something as well that's never been done at Clemson before. And you know, that one of them is play for a national championship and the other one is win a national championship. Yeah, for sure. And 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 you talked about that. What do you feel like? And th- and this is just um, well, I, and this is a question I asked to mainly all coaches I talked to, you know, regardless of sport, regardless of level. What do you feel like you guys need to do to get to where you need to go? Um, you know, for us, it's going to be the the response to the unknowns. You know, how are we gonna how are we gonna handle adversity? Um, you know, and that's been one message to the team this year is you know we do, we're not that bad that we need all the calls you know what i mean we're we're we'll take the the bad calls we don't we don't need all the umpiring calls and um how are we going to respond to when there is some adversity and you know we do drop a game and um you know what type of bounce back are we going to cuz that's really that's that's the mental toughness component you know, it's mental toughness isn't about if you can get in a fight or not. It's about can you can you stay centered? Can you get back to the middle? You know, if we're if we're playing really well and we're we're on a hot streak, can we bring it back to the middle and remember all the things that allowed us to have that hot streak and play well and be a good team? You know, or are we gonna, you know, start to take take it for granted and get complacent? Those are those are the things. Right. And then on the flip side, when it doesn't go well and we're feeling a low point, can we be able to bring it up, get back to the middle and trust our training? And I think we will because we're we're working on that all the time. But um, the thing we don't have on this team is a whole lot of postseason experience. You know, we've got Riley and Willie who have played in the World Series and played beyond a regional. Uh, But outside of Riley and Willie, I think there's three guys on the team that have played in a regional and the last time at Clemson was in 2019. Um, so those are the guys that were, uh, you know, the fifth year, the fifth year guys uh, on the team, Jackson Lindley, who's a pitcher on our staff. who's a really good pitcher. Uh, Chad Ferry and Max Starbuck, you know, those three guys plus Riley Bertram, Willie Weiss, you know, five guys out of 40 that have played in the postseason. So that's, that's something that, you know, it's, I don't know if you call it a weakness, but it's, it's certainly experience can be a strength. It is a strength. And uh, while we have older guys and while we have guys who have experience playing college baseball, we don't have guys who right now are experienced navigating their way through a postseason. Um, but Hey, you know what? The last two teams who have won national championships, their programs have never won national championships before as well. So um, anything can happen. We saw it in 2019. So, um, all right, Eric Vakic, thank you so much for coming on. Good to talk to you again. And uh, best of luck this season as, as you embark on your first year as head coach at Clemson. Thanks, Case, and congratulations to you and all you're doing. This is awesome. Thanks, bud.